Hey, hey, Waffle Gang, I do hope you are well. My name is Mark, and today we're checking out some more relationship stories. And if you do love a Reddit story, why not consider hitting that like, subscribe, maybe that notification bell too. Let's crack on with today's first story, you cheeky so-and-so. <laughs> and today's first story comes from Seagirl134, who says, Uninvited my friend and his wife from Christmas dinner. After discovering, she slept with my husband. 11 years ago, my 42 female husband, Will, 44 male, had an affair with a younger woman. He admitted to it after she told him that she was pregnant, though it ended in a miscarriage. Until recently, I had no idea who she was as he wouldn't say who she was. I've been working with Spencer, 41 male, for nearly 17 years and we are best friends. There are no secrets between us, or at least that's what I thought. He's married to Eleanor, 33 female, and they have been together for nine years, married for eight. It has recently come out that Eleanor is the woman Will slept with. It came out because I had wrongly thought that Will was cheating again, and he countered with that it was possible for him to be friends with a woman and not sleep with them, as he was friends with Eleanor and hadn't slept with her again. He then admitted that Eleanor had been the one that he slept with. I was hurt that he didn't say anything before we had become good friends with her and allowing Spencer to get involved with a woman who was happy to sleep with married men. When I saw Spencer at lunch the following week, I told him about Eleanor and Will. Spencer wasn't shocked at what I told him. He already knew. He had known for nine years. Eleanor had told him after the first time we had a double date. She was single at the time and she had no idea Will was married. As far as Spencer was concerned, it was more Will that was at fault than Eleanor, but I see them as equally being at fault. Spencer said that he hadn't told me because he didn't see the point in opening up old wounds, as we had worked past Will cheating. Eleanor hadn't said anything for the same reason. I sent Eleanor an angry text telling her that I knew about her cheating with my husband and that I didn't want her coming around anymore. I told her that I didn't trust her and that she should have told me that she slept with my husband. Eleanor just replied with, I understand and I'm sorry that for any hurt I've caused you and your family. She's not responded to any other message. I sent her about wanting to know more about her cheating with my husband. We were meant to be having Spencer, Eleanor and their kids around for Christmas as it's our turn to host. Today, I've told Spencer that I don't want Eleanor to come and have uninvited her. Spencer and the kids are still invited. He said that if Eleanor is not welcome, they will not be coming and thinks I am being unreasonable. He also said he knows I'm upset but hopes that I can move past it. Will is upset that I've uninvited them as he thinks it will ruin Christmas for our kids not getting to see their friends as planned. Plus, we have far too much food in for a family of four. Will thinks I am overreacting as I was fine with Eleanor before I found out. Am I the a-hole for not wanting to have Eleanor at our Christmas? I don't think I can see her anymore knowing she is the one my husband cheated with. Edit, in regards to the miscarriage, yes, this is true, not a lie from Will. Eleanor has told me herself that she had a miscarriage when she was 22. Not long after I posted this, Spencer called me. He told me to stop messaging Eleanor as it's stressing her out. She's pregnant with their third child. She hadn't responded as she knew I would be upset and it would stress her. Spencer told me that he and Eleanor had chosen not to tell me about Eleanor being the affair partner because they didn't want to cause issues in my marriage but they had told Will to tell me. Will had told them I knew. Spencer also said that Eleanor had been resistant to see Will and I again after she told Spencer what she had done. But when Will told them I knew, she felt better about becoming friends with me. Spencer has said that he and Eleanor need space and that he won't be answering any messages unless they are work-related for a while. And we're going to start in the comments with Adrenaline Anxiety who says, not the a-hole. The husband has had 11 years to move on from this. Spencer and Eleanor have had nine years to process this. You have not. You've just been sideswiped and betrayed again by knowing that the woman you trusted and befriended and trusted your husband with is also the woman he cheated on you with. All three of them have failed you by keeping this information from you nine years ago when she first realized. I'm not going to blame her for the affair if she didn't know he was married when it happened, but she did know he was married when she met you. And she and Spencer together decided not to tell you and to build a friendship. I don't see a comeback from this for you, Spencer and Eleanor, unfortunately. My comments on your marriage are also pretty negative. Spencer is obviously not going to keep coming around and bringing his kids around while his wife is banned. And I don't know why you're blaming her more than him or your husband anyway. 
as all three betrayed you in their omission. Mother Tradition replied to that and said, Opie's husband is the one who betrayed her. He cheated and withheld the identity of his affair partner. Eleanor wasn't even friends with Opie at the time and she didn't know he was married. If Opie doesn't need time from her husband to process this revelation, she shouldn't have a problem being around Eleanor. She's even willing to be around Spencer, even though he withheld this information for nine years as well. This is the classic case of the wife blaming the other woman. It's not that deep. OP needs to go to marriage counseling and stop blaming a woman who did nothing to her. A plant named Earl says, you're the a-hole for blaming this woman for your husband's mistakes. If she was single and didn't know that your husband was married, what exactly did she do wrong? I guess she could have told you sometime in the last nine years, but without more info from her, I'm inclined to give her the benefit of the doubt. Perhaps she thought you already know or decided to let your husband take the lead in the situation. I don't blame you for not wanting to be around her, but it really seems like you're misplacing the blame on her that really your husband deserves. Quark fan says you're the a-hole, but gentle. You have clearly not worked through the issue and the place to do that is with a therapist and your husband. Asking for details now is what makes you the a-hole and you are blaming the wrong party. She didn't cheat. She didn't know he was married and you had the details your husband provided and you accepted. Be as angry as you need, but at your husband. Oh Knows and People says, I'm really not understanding all the you're the a-hole judgments. The fact that all three of them have moved past the cheating is irrelevant. This is brand new information for you. And the fact remains that chances are, if you had known it was Eleanor your husband slept with, you wouldn't have pursued a friendship with either her or her husband in the first place. Your husband is absolutely the one at fault for cheating. Eleanor didn't even know he was married after all. But all three have deceived you by not telling you the truth. Only you can make the decision as to whether you continue your friendship with either of them. And in my opinion, Christmas is going to be too soon to make that decision. Not the a-hole. And one more comment from Evie Rose who says not the a-hole and our divorce. Everyone knew but you. They are not trustworthy and not what I call friends. As for your husband, I'm lost for words and trust me, that barely happens. P.S. If she didn't know at the time, she's not the one to blame. She didn't marry you, he did. He should be faithful, not her. But this is going on for years now. I'd out them all out of my life. Sorry. So OP gives us two updates. And the first one says, 11 years ago, my 42 female husband, Will, 44 male, had an affair with a 22 year old. She fell pregnant, which is why he told me at the time, but it ended in a miscarriage. With the help of therapy, I've forgiven Will. 22 year old has turned out to be Eleanor, now 33 female. She is married to Spencer, 41 male, who is my best friend of almost 17 years. Spencer and Eleanor have been together nine years and married for eight. Spencer has known that Eleanor was the one who slept with Will since the first time Will and I met her on a double date. Eleanor told Spencer that she recognized Will and told him what she had done. She hadn't known at the time that he was married. Spencer and Eleanor had made a decision not to tell me as Spencer had seen the turmoil it put me through the last time and he didn't want to cause issues in my marriage or to reopen old wounds. They had told Will to tell me, but he told them I knew. I had no idea until recently. When I found out, I angrily messaged Eleanor telling her that I knew everything and that I didn't want her coming around anymore. I told her that I didn't trust her and that she should have told me that she slept with my husband. She replied with, I understand and I'm sorry for any hurt that I've caused you and your family. She's not responded to any other message. Spencer has since told me to stop and leave her alone as she's pregnant with her third child and I'm stressing her out. The cheek of it, I'm stressed out and finding out that she slept with my husband and that her and Spencer have been playing nice to my face for the last nine years. Spencer has said that Eleanor had been resistant to see Will and I again after she told him what she had done, but when Will told them I knew, she felt better about becoming friends with me. Yet neither of them thought to check with me that I knew. They just took what he said at face value. He has said that both he and Eleanor need space and he won't be answering any more messages unless they are work-related for a while. He was meant to be my friend. I've confided things in Spencer that I haven't with anyone else. We were very close and he lied to my face for years. Spencer knew about my marriage issues when Will cheated. I opened up to him and exposed myself to him. He knew and he didn't say anything to me. He kept it to himself and I don't feel that he is remorseful for what he's done. It feels like he thinks that Eleanor is the victim in all of this. While I'm mad at him, I'd like to try and repair the friendship. I just want him to understand what he's done and why I'm hurting. Though I don't think I want to continue a friendship with Eleanor. Not after she has lied straight to my face for the last nine years. Next update, three days later. 
I, 42 female, have made an appointment with a lawyer to start the process of divorcing my husband, 44 male. The appointment isn't until the new year, as that is the only time they could fit me in. We have been married for 14 years. 11 years ago, he had an affair but wouldn't tell me who the 22-year-old was. I thought we had worked past it with therapy, which we were going to restart in the new year. I'd forgiven him and I thought he was being honest and truthful with me. It turns out that he had not been as honest as he should have been. I've recently found out that the wife of my friend was his affair partner. They have all known for the past nine years. He had also lied to them, telling them that I knew so they wouldn't tell me. After having done some digging, I checked his phone when he went to bed as we have an open phone policy and discovered that he had been texting the woman he had cheated on me with, complimenting her, saying he loves her company, forgets about the rest of the world when he sees her and wants to see her more. To her credit, she's not responded to any of his messages, not even to tell him to stop, so I suspect she has blocked him. These messages only go back a few weeks. Before that, the only other message he'd sent her was asking advice over a present for my birthday. He starts the text thread saying that he's my husband and he got her number from me and hope it's okay that he's texting her so I don't think there were any other messages before that. I had posted on Reddit about it and it opened my eyes. My friend and his wife are not to blame. Will, my husband, is to blame. We're currently sleeping separately though this does happen regularly when he works a night shift so it's not unusual for our children to see him sleeping in the spare room. We have three children, eight male, six female and four female and I worry about telling them that mummy and daddy are splitting. Both Will and I come from broken homes and we never wanted that for our children. We wanted them to have a stable home, but it's clear that is not going to work. While one of us had worked to save our marriage, the other had not. I want to tell the children because I honestly don't think I can play happy families with him on Christmas Day. I also don't want them to hate me for the fact our family is imploding because of their father's lies and deception. And I'm very glad that OP is finally out of that situation. But it was the first paragraph in the first story that really jumped out to me. I mean, all of it is an absolute mess. Don't get me wrong. OP mentioning that there are no secrets between us, or at least that's what I thought. But before that saying, you know, when she found out about the affair, but he wouldn't say who the affair partner was. Ugh. But what do you guys make of this situation? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. And let's move on to another story. And our next story comes from the Am I the Buttface subreddit. So if you haven't been there, go and check that out as well. It's titled, Am I the Buttface for telling a woman to mind her own business after she asked me to cover up my back acne? And this is from Bubs T. I'm a 21 female. Every Tuesday, I have a really busy schedule. My first class goes from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. My second class goes from 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. And my only tutorial for the day goes from 7 to 8 p.m. I have a lot of free time in between lectures. I'll often go to campus gym and do a full body workout. I do my workout, weights, the machines, etc. And I decided to go walk the track that's upstairs in the building. I should point out here that I have bad back acne. It's kind of gross looking, but it usually doesn't stop me from not wearing my jacket unless I get cold and wearing my sports bra in the gym. I was doing the track when this older, early 50s woman passed by me and shot me this dirty look. I figured she had a good look at my back and I just shrugged it off. I got defensive and shot back a look that said, I know I have back acne. After a bit, we ended up meeting up at the same spot where she first stared at me and she said something along the lines of, honey, you should cover that up. Despite Lee immediately knowing what she was talking about, I asked her what she wanted me to cover up exactly. Your back zits. I firstly went into a rant at her about how acne technically should be aired out in a sweaty area. If I put my sweater on, it'd make me more zits. I then ripped into her about why the F she was judging me on keeping my sweater off and that my acne was none of her business. I said it pretty audibly and some runners started looking at us. She scoffed and said that millennials, I'm not even a millennial, are so sensitive these days and that she was just trying to help me. I'm either bud face. I feel like maybe I went off on her too much. I don't remember exactly what I said, but I said something along the lines of, First of all, acne shouldn't be trapped in a sweaty area. It had just produced more of it. Secondly, why are you telling me how to dress at the gym? My acne is none of your business and it isn't bothering you. But puzzled Jew says she wasn't trying to help you. She was helping herself. Express a crappy opinion. She was uncomfortable because of her own issues. I'm so dumb with people saying outright offensive crap and 
and being like, oh, you are too sensitive. No, maybe you're too sensitive, Nancy. If some back acne makes you obsess so much that about what I'm doing, eyes on your own paper, dear. Better to have people not know if you're a fool than to open your mouth and clear all doubt. Not the butthole. Sophie Wynn says, not the butthole. The only way it would be appropriate for her to ask you to cover up would be if the acne was a health hazard. Open sores, bleeding, pus. It's past acne at this point, to be honest. And you were using indoor gym equipment. Sounds like she had an aesthetic issue. Also, if she hates millennials and younger folk, maybe she shouldn't go to the campus gym. Velo says, everyone's a butthole. She should mind her own damn business. You didn't need to make a whole scene. I agree she needed to be told off, but if it was loud enough for several other people to hear, that's a little much. Though if you had any spots on your back that were open, she might have had a point, albeit a really poorly delivered and judgmental way of delivering it. If she had a concern about that, she needed to bring it up to the staff or could have been a bit more polite. So OP updates their post, which says update. Holy crap, I have the mother of all updates for you. I came into the gym this morning and as I was walking to the change room, this little Indian lady looked up probably to acknowledge the person coming in, looked up at me and down and said, come here, sweetheart, come here, wagging a finger at me. I walked over to her and she told me that she saw the whole thing yesterday and was peed. She firstly went into a rant about how body acne is nothing to be ashamed of and how I should continue to work out with it out in the open because it didn't bother her. I'll admit I felt really awkward, but I thanked her. She then turned around and showed me her back. She had tons of zits on her back and said that she would cover them up, but she never cared too much about people's opinions of them. But that wasn't all. Apparently yesterday, she was in the change room and she saw the Karen come in. She asked the woman to come here right now and yelled at her at the top of her lungs in front of the whole change room about how dare she body shame someone like that and how would she feel if she went off on her. Apparently, she made the Karen cry too. She mentioned that she didn't report her to the front desk at all. She said they wouldn't have punished her at all. They come across hundreds of people. What would they do about one woman they'd probably never see? I had to punish her. Edit. I'm going to elaborate what happened with the Karen. Basically, after I left, the Indian lady went to the change room and the Karen came in. The Indian lady, full of rage, wagged her finger like she did with me and told her to come here right now. Karen looked at her funny and then walked over to her. The Indian lady tore into her about how dare you disrespect a young lady like that. At first, the Karen refused to admit she did anything. She kept saying she had no idea what the lady was talking about, but the Indian lady called bullcrap and told her that she mocked a girl's body. The lady got loud and she got nasty. The Karen didn't know what to say. She was exposed and get this, the whole change room effing joined in. Old women and young college girls were losing their goddamn mind on this bee and she started crying due to the embarrassment. Now I'm going to turn this one to you guys. What do you guys make of this situation? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. And just a huge thank you from the bottom of my heart for getting involved in today's stories. As always, your love, your support, and your time always means the absolute world to me. So thank you so much. And if you do want more Reddit stories, don't forget at the very end of the video, there'll be a playlist there for you. You can click on it and it will just keep scrolling through the videos for you. Thank you so, so much. And hopefully we'll see you in the next one. Take care and much love. Yeah, man, I remember being so naive when life was good, weather and palm trees. Back in the day, you were everything I need. But then along came a time when you crushed my dreams. Oh, yeah, you played me like a fool when you made me believe that the line between love wasn't thick enough to read. Oh, yeah, you see, we in the spare crime everywhere. You're selling false hope because you just don't care. Nah, uh, you just don't care. Nah, 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 you just don't, just don't care.